when I first read the script, I couldn't believe that I didn't know more about the man. I'd heard of Harry Clasper, uh, but the extent to which he revolutionized boat racing and the achievements that he, he reached in his relatively short lifetime were amazing. And this was a man from really humble beginnings. This was a man who couldn't read or write until he was an adult. We were talking about local heroes, and through some research I discovered that Harry Clasper, the legend of the sport, the legend of rowing, the David Beckham of his time, this little known and yet incredibly famous at the time character from the North East. And I encouraged Ed to explore that story a little bit more. My name's Ed Waugh, I'm the writer of Haraway Harry. We're delighted to be going to the London Rowing Club, which is a few hundred yards from where the races would have started. But Putney has big significance for Harry. Obviously, that's where he won all of the world championships. Two or three boathouses down from the London Rowing Club is the Westminster Rowing Club. And if you look at the, the frontage of that, you'll see J. H. Clasper. And that was Harry's son who moved to London in 1868. I was a rower myself uh, at school and at university and um, indeed I actually rowed uh, from London Rowing Club where the show is being performed when in London a couple of days before it comes up to Newcastle. And um, so I know what hard work rowing is, every single muscle in the body. You have to think quite hard about what you're doing and when you're doing it and how you're doing it. It's very skilled. And our studios at ITV are very close to a pub called The Skiff on the Tyne, um, which has links to Harry Clasper and his family. And that's on Harry Clasper Way. And I figured that this was a name of a guy whose story deserved to be told. And I think what Ed's done with it is absolutely out of this world. Love it. Harry's story is uh, an extraordinary story of a, of a uh, a man in uh, adversity. It's really like actually the Rocky story really. He comes from nowhere, terrible poverty, uh, trains like a madman, <sighs> determined, focused and eventually of course he becomes world champion and becomes the godfather of, of, of modern Rome because he also redesigned the boats. The significance of Putney is that it was effectively the centre of Roy. Harry led a team of Geordies to the Thames. Any time your Lambeth way, any evening, any day. After 1845, Harry became the main man effectively, way. and rowing on the Tyne was elevated in prominence. And Jamie has brought it to life in such an engaging and compelling way. Actually, there's one scene, um, and I won't spoil it for you. You may be going to see it at Putney, um, you may be going to see it at the Theatre Royal. Um, wherever you're going, just make sure you go, <laughs> because there's this one scene where you are so gripped and enthralled that Jamie is breathless at the end, as are the entire audience. It was gripping, it really was. I see a lot of myself in Harry. He's a guy from humble beginnings who's found something that he was passionate about and just ran with it. And he tried just to get as far as he could and any hurdle that was in the way, he just found a way to break it down. When he died, 130,000 people uh, were in the procession um, watching his funeral, and which went past the Theatre Royal. So it's a lovely link, actually, between bringing the show to the Theatre Royal and the fact that his coffin went past it. There was no doubt about it. He was a very, very clever person. And in some cases, you read, he was just years ahead of his time. Canny lad, Harry. Harry's the king of the Thames and the Tain. I well, I'm a roar, not a singer. <laughs>